This is Christopher Nolan. He's a big time Hollywood director. He loves film, like old school film, and how it looks in theaters, not your 55 inch television screen. He's also the director behind the Batman films, the ones with Christian Bale and Inception. So when Tenet, his next big attempt at a blockbuster, premiered in the middle of a global pandemic, he wanted people to see it in theaters. This is Ryan Seals, a videographer based in Emporia, Kansas, which is about two hours from Kansas City. He's a huge Christopher Nolan fan. So when Tenet finally released in theaters this September after a few delays, it wasn't up for debate. And there were only two theaters in the whole country playing it 70 millimeter IMAX. And so my choices were <laughs> Fort Lauderdale, Florida, or <laughs> Indianapolis, and I figured Florida is a scary place with COVID right now, so it would just be safer to go to Indianapolis. It was a two hour drive to Kansas City, waited in the airport, we flew to Orlando, got a connecting flight to Indianapolis. We got to Indianapolis at about, I wanna say 10.30 at night Eastern time. And then we drove to, we had to take an Uber to the uh, hotel. So we got to our hotel about 11.30 at night. Went to bed immediately, woke up, and we went to the 10 a.m. screening. And then we got out of that, went to the back to the airport. So, you know, it was, a, it was a pretty intense little trip just to see a, a two and a half hour movie. But for me, seeing it on 70 millimeter is 100% worth it. The regular moviegoer isn't as dedicated as SEALs, and questions remain over whether regular moviegoers are ready to return to theaters now that major studios are back in production mode and blockbusters are hitting the silver screen again. Here's what the movie business looks like during a pandemic, and what it'll look like in the future. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a devastating effect on the movie theater industry, and not just movie theaters, but production as well. So on all parts of the supply chain for movies and entertainment, each one of those has been affected in a really profound way. The largest movie theater chain, AMC Theaters, reported losing $561 million in its second quarter earnings because of the pandemic. It reported revenue of just $19 million, roughly down 99% from the $1.5 billion from the previous year's quarter. Other chains like Cinemark also reported losing $170.4 million in its second quarter earnings, of which $19.5 million was used for a permanent reduction in employees and closures of underperforming theaters. Before COVID, box office numbers in theaters around the world have actually been rising over the past decade. Just last year, in 2019, the global box office numbers hit a record high of 42.2 billion, despite an annual decrease in North America. The international box office market also surpassed 30 billion for the first time. And as theaters reopen, movies like Christopher Nolan's Tenet hit 300 million at the global box office, a strong number despite the ongoing pandemic. In 2020 though, movie theaters emptied out as the coronavirus pandemic rippled across the world. Despite new health protocols at major theater chains, there is a question whether theaters are safe to continue reopening. When people take their mask off to eat, um, they're going to be breathing. They might uh, say something to a friend. They might uh, laugh at something if you're going to see a comedy. Um, and then by doing that, that spreads more germs. And that's easy to say, you know, if you just take off your mask, put some popcorn in your mouth and then put your mask back on. But the odds of people actually doing that and the odds of people um, following those rules are very, very slim. People love going to the movie theater. It's, it's a pastime that people love. It's a habit. It's just something about that big screen communal experience. So I think, Always when you have so many different uh, competing platforms and uh, delivery systems for entertainment, whether it be on your phone or your computer, wherever that may be, the movie theater is another piece of that puzzle. During the summer of 2020, drive-in theaters were doing great business. 
The pandemic has completely crushed big movie theater revenues. That's because movie theaters make more profit from concessions, not actual ticket sales. Movie theater chains usually keep about 50% of the revenue from ticket sales each year, while they keep over 80% of revenue from concessions. Last year, the movie theater industry took in $15 billion in revenue domestically, a combination of around $11 billion in ticket sales and $4 billion in concessions. That's according to the National Association of Theater owners. The bulk of profit for movie theaters come from popcorn, soda, and candy people order at the theaters. Theaters stay in business because of their high profit margins on food and drinks. This money is then used to cover overhead expenses such as rent, employee salaries, and maintenance. Running a movie theater is very expensive. The bigger chains, they have a massive footprint of thousands of screens and thousands of theaters, and that doesn't come cheap. So you have rents, you have the monthly expenses, you have employees. Several news outlets reported in July that AMC movie theaters avoided near-term bankruptcy. Cinemark also laid off workers and closed underperforming theaters. But smaller, independent theaters may not have the same resources. Another big hurdle for movie theaters depends on when theaters will be open in California and New York. As of September 21st, only a couple of counties in California allowed theaters to open, including San Diego and San Francisco. As for New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo said he will hold off on reopening movie theaters, concert venues, and restaurants for now. Even where movie theaters opened back up, there's not a huge line of movies to get excited about. Warner Brothers' Wonder Woman 1984, which was originally scheduled for October, was pushed back to Christmas. Marvel's Black Widow, originally on schedule to hit theaters in November, was pushed back six months to May 2021. The studio also postponed a full year release for the remake of West Side Story to December 2021. Actor Robert Pattinson also tested positive for coronavirus in early September, halting the Batman production for a couple of weeks before resuming. There's so many moving parts to this that it's almost impossible to know if we were to talk in three months, four months, we're going to be looking at a different landscape. We just don't know how that will impact the movie theaters because this is something that you can't really, you can kind of plan around it, but we don't know how long it's going to last and what ebb and flow it's going to take in terms of the pandemic. The movie business has a reputation for being recession-proof. Even when the economy is in a downturn, people want entertainment. But COVID presents unprecedented challenges. Movie studios are coming up with alternative ways to package and distribute content to its customers. Starting with AMC and Universal's unprecedented deal to shorten the theatrical window from traditional 90 days to 17 days, some movies have been skipping the North American box office altogether, or going straight to video on demand and streaming platforms. Trolls World Tour was released directly as a premium video on demand, along with other movies like Scoob and The King of Staten Island. Tom Hanks' World War II naval drama Greyhound premiered on Apple TV+, Plus, bypassing a traditional theater release. Disney's Mulan released in international markets and made the film available on demand through Disney+. Plus. Is it possible for movies to skip the traditional theater release altogether in the foreseeable future? So with something like Trolls World Tour, it makes sense that you're going to go during this time direct to consumer simply because you're targeting a smaller demographic. The movie didn't cost as much money to make as some of the blockbusters. And even with Mulan, Disney was very, very clear in their earnings call. Their CEO said to everybody in Wall Street, this is not the new norm. Right? This is not something we're going to do for our future movies, and certainly for blockbusters. And what movie did they pick? They picked Mulan, which rumor was it cost $200 million to make and that they spend a $100 million marketing budget. So you're talking about a movie that it looks like their cost was $300 million. Uh, also, Mulan was not direct to consumer globally, right? It was mostly in the US. So in the countries outside the US where movie theaters were still opening or had opened, they were offering the movie there through the theater. So we have seen a bit of a change because of COVID, but it's definitely not the new norm going forward. It doesn't make sense. It's not a model which is sustainable. You don't produce a movie for over a hundred million dollars and you put it in a premium VOD at the beginning. So here and there you might do a little bit of income, but if you take into consideration all the costs, you take into consideration the losses that you lose in the international market, because in the international market, many countries 
don't even have yet premium VOD. The future of the big screen remains uncertain. On October 5th, Regal announced that it was suspending operations at all U.S. locations, among other reasons due to a lack of films to show. Would they limit a number of big blockbuster movies coming to theaters? The upcoming months will be filled with lower-budget horror films, dramas, and romantic comedies. As of late September, AMC stock was down 32.6% year-to-date. Stocks of Cineworld and Cinemark were all down more than 70% year-to-date. I believe that vaccination, if will not be before the end of the year, will be in the first quarter of 2021. The vaccination will have not only a medical effect on people, but also a big psychological effect on people. And I guess that we will win our business back. We are in a state that we've never been in before. And, and usually we say that as a country when something happens, but this is truly something not just country-based, it's global-based. So you have to adapt, you have to change, right? You have to improvise, you have to overcome. And, and that's what different companies are doing, not just the movie industry. 